Hello, 8th graders. Mr. Olson here. Let's do some math. Find that grand theorem. We have done this so many times. You should be able to do these problems on your own. If you have questions on that grand theorem, there are other videos that explain it, so yeah. These are mostly just to review after we got back from break, because uh, a lot of people tend to forget stuff, so yep. Today, uh, class business, it's the usual stuff. Uh, box tops, bringing box tops, leaving, always let me know if you're leaving. Quizzes. We take quizzes if you need. That's the biggest one right now. There's so many people have quizzes missing, and it's hurting the grade. Homework. If you have homework missing, that hurts the grade as well. Not as much as quizzes, but yeah. Three good things. One good thing. Oh, I just got my script for the uh, school musical. It's been fun to kind of read through that and just take a look at uh, what we'll be performing in. Man, just a few months here. It's coming up. It should be great. Today's objective is to better understand the Pythagorean theorem of converse. So let's take a look at that. <coughs> My suggestion with the Pythagorean Theorem Converse, that's where we do, we check if a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If it does, it's a right triangle. <coughs> <coughs> oh my gosh, I swallowed something wrong. I'm like, well, I had a handful of trail mix just before I started the video. And then apparently it's, yeah, I swallowed something wrong. Anyway, I like to square all three of them first. So that gives us 25, 49, and 81. And then whatever the two smaller ones are, add them up, see if they make the bigger. So 25 plus 49, that's 74. Does 74 equal 81? No, it does not. So this is not a right triangle. Not right. Not right at all. It's especially important one like this, where we've got that square root, that we may not be sure exactly what that equals. We can still find if it's the right triangle, though. Just square all three. So 6 squared, 36. Square root of 13 squared, those cancel out, giving you 13. Turns out it's a lot smaller than 36, isn't it? 7 squared, 49. Let's write that better. There we go. Does, 16 plus, does 36 plus 13 equal 49? Indeed it does. So 49 equals 49, so it is a right triangle. Let's look at a couple more examples. Try these ones out on your own first, and then we'll go over them as a... Uh, class, I guess. Okay, so, 6, 8, 10. 6 squared, 36. 8 squared, 64. One, 10 squared, 100. Does 36 plus 64 make 100? Yes, it does. So that is a right triangle. Yes, right. Number 8, 5 squared is 25. Square root of 8 squared is 8. 4 squared is 16. And 8 plus 16 equals... 25. So that's 24, which is not equal to 25, so that is not right. No. Five, square root 5, square root 12, square root 13. Now you might think it's a Pythagorean triple, but that's an easy trap to fall into. Square that, 5. Square that, 12. Square that, 13. 5 plus 12 does not equal 13. It equals 17. And 17 is not the same as 13, see? So not right. This one here, square all 3. So yeah, that's why I like the method of square root of 3, is that if you're ever unsure of the order, you can then see what, what they are. So square root of 6 squared is 6, 3 squared is 9, square root of 15 squared is 15, 6 plus 9 does equal 15, so this is a yes. Here's one more set of problems, try these on your own, um, and finish them on your own. I'm not going to go over them with you, because you should do something on your own, right? See you later, have a great rest of your day, bye.